Hey guys, it's me again, Joe Wilson from Marmoset. I'm going to quickly run over some of the new features in the 206 update of Toolbag 2. First off, we've added support for area lights. This means that the lights now have a physical size and shape, which controls how blurry the shadows are. This replaces the size slash softness setting that previously affected shadow blurring. As I update the shape of the light, you can see how the shadows get more blurred the larger and more diffuse the light is. And you can see that the specular highlight shape is also represented accurately as well. A variety of other shapes can be created as well by adjusting the shape parameters. For instance, you can stretch the light out to create a tube type light, which is really great for representing fluorescent lights. The light shape can be stretched in multiple directions as well to create square or rectangle shapes, which works very well for soft boxes or really diffuse lighting that you would commonly see in photography. Another cool feature with the area lights is the ability to turn on light visibility, which makes your physical light shape render as an object in the scene. This is really cool if you want to create uh, fluorescent lights or really any sort of light that you want to be visible in the render. Visible lights work really well with some of the post effects like Bloom and the new lens flare feature, which I will cover shortly. We've also changed up the user interface for the lights as well. Now the GUI elements only render for the currently selected light. This really helps to reduce the visual clutter in complex scenes. Another feature that we've added is a curve editor for color grading, which can be found in the post effects option in the camera properties. Curves is a really common way to do color correction, both in games, photography, and also cinematography as well. By simply adjusting a few points on the curve here, I can make some very quick and easy contrast adjustments. For greater control, I can tweak the color output on a per channel basis. This gives me a lot of room to go in and make very deliberate changes to the color output. A lot of times when you see uh, movies or games, each scene will have very specific color grading, which helps to really set the mood for a particular scene or image. We have the ability to load and save presets. We've also included a bunch of presets so that you can quickly switch through them and see what sort of different effects are possible. We've added a few new post effects to simulate the optical properties of a camera lens. First off is lens flares. One of the cool things about lens flares is that they are generated from the scene content. This means that bright points in the skybox background, visible area lights, emissive surfaces, and even bright specular highlights on your model will generate the lens flare effect. Flares have a few basic controls. First off, lens flare strength controls the intensity of the flare effect. Flare threshold controls the contrast of the source content which generates the lens flare effect. This gives you a finer degree of control over exactly what sort of content in your scene causes flares to show up. Lens flare size controls how large or small the flares or individual ghosts appear. The shape of the flares is tied to the aperture shape and aperture rotation, so you can customize the look of the flares by playing with those settings. We've added a distortion feature as well. This effect simulates the geometric distortion that is common with camera lenses. Pulling the slider to the left will give you barrel distortion, while pulling it to the right will give you pincushion distortion. The final lens effect that we've added is chromatic aberration. This simulates the fringing caused by different colors of light hitting the camera sensor at different points. Chromatic aberration can be controlled on a per channel basis. Generally I like to crank up the intensity of the chromatic aberration effect, and then set my channels up in an interesting way before turning the effect back down to a reasonable level. This is an effect that can really get out of control if you turn the intensity up high. These new post effects are really useful for adding that extra bit of imperfection to your images, which is great for portraying a more filmic or realistic render. For anyone who is curious about how I attached a gun to my camera, this isn't actually a new feature, so it's very easy to do. All you need to do is drag an object onto the camera to parent it, and its position will update as you move the camera around. I'm really excited about this last feature, and I think a lot of you guys will be too. We finally got in mesh scale, which has been one of the most frequently requested features. Scale mode can be activated by pressing Ctrl R or by toggling to scale mode in the edit menu. The central widget control scales objects uniformly, while the red, green, and blue widget controls scales the objects non-uniformly in the X, Y, and Z axes respectively. Here I have a group object selected. 
so the scale will be applied to all of the objects in the group, including meshes and lights. Scaling can be performed on individual meshes or objects as well, and all of the scale parameters can be found in the per object properties. That does it for the headline features in the Toolbag 206 update. We've also added a bunch of bug fixes as well. As always, you can find the full change log as well as more tutorials, information about Toolbag, SkyShop, the Northern Italy panel pack, and all sorts of other cool stuff on our website. This has been Joe Wilson for Marmoset. Thanks for watching.